Have you heard the tale of Mullet Mad Jack? Mullet Mad Jack is a throwback boomer shooter, similar to Doom, but this one has a fresh and kind of colorful 80s aesthetic to it. It's very heavily inspired by VHS kind of action movies of the past, and that is something you're going to be reminded of all the time. <laughs> this character always spouts out those quippy little one-liners, and little action movie slices, and little references to things here and there, but this game is incredible, and essentially a 9 out of 10, and let me tell you why. Like I said, I have to touch on that 80s aesthetic. Everything is really colorful and not serious, and I think that really lends to this game very well. The audio is similar. It's kind of, at times, a pulse-pounding 80s kind of <laughs> little tune. Other times, a little more relaxed and kind of quiet, but that's really second to the point, because you're going to be seeing all of these environments blur on past you as you're moving at lightning speed, because the whole thing about Mullet Mad Jack is that you only have 10 seconds. Now that might sound a little weird, you have to get to the end of this entire game in 10 seconds. How's that going to work? Well, these are played out in very, very small stages. Similar to Doom in that way, where you're really incentivized to blast all the way through to the end, hit that button at the end, the exit checkpoint, and that'll progress you to the next level. You get a bit of a score, you get a bit of a, a rating, A rating or worse, and it keeps the action moving forward, so you're never really stuck in one spot. These really, really tiny levels, these stages I will call them, they last between 30 and 70 seconds, but I only have 10 seconds, you may say. Well, each kill that you get adds a little bit of time to the clock, and that's really where the beauty of this game comes in, because different stylistic kills, you have a left trigger that can activate um, kind of like a finisher move and that'll add extra points to your time so you're getting even more progressively better faster stronger and you're killing more enemies in more stylistic ways and what it does is it gives you rewards for that it's taking into account okay well you've kicked this guy into a window or a fan or threw some glass into another deadly trap and you're doing a lot of these environmental things on the fly which is really challenging at times because you're moving light speed through this map and I found myself at times really having to kind of panic in the moment where how can I find another enemy to do another style kill so I can just get a couple more seconds I'm almost there and more often than not I did triumph but it had the it's always at the back of your mind something about that timing seeing a clock tick down as you're playing adds to that stress and oh it feels good to wipe that stress away the environments aren't very interesting and that's kind of the lower point of the game is that you're rushing through these things so quickly, you're seeing a lot of hallways, a lot of rooms that don't make sense. Nothing really matters too much in that regard, but you are slamming through these levels level after level after level to try and get the princess, of course. But as you get to your supposed end goal, well, the princess is in another castle. <laughs> I don't know if it says those words exactly, but it's full of references to video games just like that. Just like Mario, you have to get to the castle, defeat it, beat the boss, and then you realize, well, I have another castle to find. And that continues all the way up until 80, I believe. I think the game ends at 80, and that was not very long. 80 sounds like a lot of levels, but when you're blasting through them at 40 seconds-ish each, it doesn't take very long to burn through this game, and I think that's kind of, again, where it falls a little short. I don't know much you could do to change the outcoming of this game, or to really add more without it being a little bit dry, and I think that's kind of why the game comes to an end a little bit shorter than most, but I was really enjoying my time there, and by the end of the game, I just wanted more. Luckily. I could run through on Endless Mode, and Endless Mode offers me a lot of that same pulse-pounding gameplay, and it functions just like a roguelite that way. So, in fact, 
You might get more out of the Endless Mode than you would in the general story, but regardless, this game really stands out because of its roguelite elements and its Doom-like aesthetic. It's kind of throwback to that really lightning-fast paced shooter, and that's exactly my favorite kind of shooter. That is why I give this a 9 out of 10. Mullet Mad Jack. Check it out.